Hey everyone, Mr. Piano Tech here, and today I'm going to show you how to care for your piano. Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to care for your piano. Now this includes four main areas of focus. Number one is going to be the environment that the piano is in. Number two is going to be the finish and key care. Number three will be regular maintenance. And number four, possibly the most important area of focus, I'm going to keep a big secret until the end of the video. So number one, the environment that your piano is in is incredibly important. Be sure that your piano is in climate controlled environment year round. The number one environmental factor that can affect your piano's performance, including whether or not it stays in tune real well and how well it plays, is going to be the moisture levels. Now here in Florida, we end up with a little bit too much moisture. If you're out west, maybe you end up with a little too dry conditions. So it's important that you can control that. The number one way to control that is with the humidity control system. Now, some brands will be affected by humidity more than others, and some pianos, just the way that they're designed, will be affected more than others. So the number one way to tell if you're having an issue with this is if there's too much moisture, you're going to have uh, some sticky keys, the piano's going to start going sharp in pitch, which means it's actually absorbing a little bit too much moisture is expanding out, it's pushing up on the soundboard, pushing up on the bridge and pushing up on the strings, and it's gonna raise the overall pitch of the piano over time. Now, if you're in too dry conditions, you're gonna have the opposite problem. Things are gonna dry out too much. You're gonna have the piano maybe go a little bit lower in pitch, and you're gonna to start to have things uh, start to come a little loose. The glue joints can come, become too dried out and will actually start to come apart. Um, that's a problem as well. So the number one way people control the moisture in the pianos is using a dehumidifier or humidifier system, also known as a damp chaser system. Uh, damp chaser has been around for many, many years, many decades, and they are really good systems at controlling the moisture level in your piano. Now, pianos are manufactured around 45% humidity, and that's pretty much where they like to stay most of the time. So like here in Florida, that's very hard to achieve with just your basic climate controlled environment in your home using your air conditioner system and your heating system in the winter. So even with that rolling all the time, you may be at like 50, 55, even 60% humidity, uh, which is still a little bit too high and you may develop problems. Out west, you're gonna have the opposite problem. Uh, things are gonna be a little too dry and you need the humidifier portion of the system to do most of the work. So I recommend talking to your technician about this, asking them if there's any issues with moisture levels in the piano, if your piano's in the right environment, and uh, let them make the recommendations for the area and in the region of the country that you live in. So a lot of people ask me, what temperature should I keep my home year round? Uh, what's good for the piano, it, especially if they leave their residence for a certain amount of time throughout the year, maybe they have another home up north, down south, that sort of thing. I recommend trying to keep your piano in between 70 and 80 degrees year round. That's usually pretty good for the piano. A good rule of thumb is if you're comfortable, your piano is most likely pretty comfortable too. There's other factors to consider there, but that's usually a pretty good rule of thumb. So number two is going to be finish care. And for that, we're gonna head over to the music store and take a look at a few different piano finishes. So let's head over there now. Okay, so we're here at the music store. We're gonna take a look at a few different finishes. So the most common one, and then the one I'm most asked about is your, uh, like your really high, high polished, shiny black piano. Uh, what that really is, is a polyester finish, so like this. So let me show you here. So basically, uh, this is almost like a plastic, um, and um, it actually doesn't require much maintenance at all. So usually you just want to keep it uh, clean and uh, dust it off. So you can use a really soft cloth just to dust it off and you can usually rub fingerprints out of it, that sort of thing. Really low maintenance and they're very, very durable. Um, they can't even take a few hits without doing too much damage to them. But I would use um, the products by Corey, the high polish and satin sheen, depending on whether you have the, the high polish like this or it is more of a satin. And the satin, we, there's one over here. Let's take a look at that. So this is what I'm talking about when I say satin. Um, this is actually like a, uh, a hand rub satin. 
Uh, so the process is actually they, they will put the finish on and they actually do hand rub it and you can usually see the lines in it from where they do that. Uh, it usually costs a little bit more to have this type of finish. They're, they're really good looking, they're really sharp. I like them a lot. They're still fairly durable, but these are a little bit easier to ding up than your, uh, your polyester ones. So if you do smack it pretty good, you will bust a part out of it and that's going to be a, usually a costly repair. So as careful as you can with them. Again though, low maintenance, uh, just wipe it down with a cloth um, and you can use the Cori Satin Sheen product for it if you do get some gunk on it just to kind of help rub that out of it. But um, for the most part, pretty low maintenance, just kind of uh, just wipe it down and uh, they shouldn't really have to do much to these. The last one, um, your wood grain finishes, uh, more of like your natural tone finishes. Uh, for these, I would use Old English. Uh, here's one here. So we'll use this as an example. So yeah, so this type of piano I see a lot and you know, they usually have like little nicks and scrapes and stuff like that in them. Um, if you use Old English, uh, this one you'd use the one for light woods and they also make one for dark woods. Uh, and basically what it does is it, it kind of just fills in all the little scrapes and scratches to where you can't really see it. So it's not really a repair but it fills it in really well where you don't really notice it. Um, again, just use a soft cloth if you're gonna use it on it. Uh, just keep it dusted off. And uh, if you need to apply the Old English, just use it on a soft cloth. It may take two or three times using the Old English for it to fully settle in and soak in. So it may take, you know, if you do it one day and you go back the next day and you say, uh, this, this didn't do anything, do it again. Um, it should fill it in and eventually it'll soak it in enough to where um, uh, you won't have to do it anymore. Um, now with your keys, um, most keys are plastic, uh, which are pretty easy to care for. Uh, of course, there are some pianos that have ivory keys. Uh, those usually require a, a different type of cleaning. Um, and there are also are um, a few different materials that were used over the years as well. But uh, for the most part, you're gonna see either plastic or you're going to see uh, ivory. W with either of them, you can start by just using a, uh, a very soft cloth. You can slightly moisten it with maybe some warm water to make it a really mild detergent, just wipe them down. Um, that usually does a pretty good job. If you have ivories and they're really yellow, that takes um, more of a professional cleaning job. So you can check with your technician and see if it does that kind of work. If they're damaged really bad, I just, re I just recommend just recapping them uh, with, n with, new, with new material, especially uh, if they're like uh, chopped a lot on the front, which, you know, kids seem to do that a lot over the years to pianos. But uh, Corey does make a, a key bright uh, product that you can use on it if it, uh, you just want to clean it up a little bit more, but pretty low maintenance. So anything beyond this, uh, we will typically use uh, the Murphy's Oil Soap, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, it's really good at just getting a lot of the, the gunk that may build up on a piano, especially if you buy a piano used from an individual and needs a lot of cleaning up. That's a good place to start. So yeah, between, um, so those three things is what I'd mostly recommend. So the Murphy's Oil Soap, if it's really nasty, and then uh, follow up with either the Old English or the uh, Cori products, depending on what type of finish you have. Um, but again, pretty low maintenance, just keep it dusted, uh, cleaned as best you can. And if there's any sort of damage to it, you can use uh, like little markers. So we use the ones that are made by Mohawk. Uh, they work really well, but that's leaning more towards the category of professional repair. But the markers are pretty good if you need to fill in like a little bit of a deeper spot that has a little gouge in it to just get the color that matches, uh, get the color marker that, that matches the color of your finish and it, they do a really good job. But usually Old English will fill that in. And if you've got a really deep gouge in something, I would talk to your technician and see what they recommend doing about it. So. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the different products I talked about. Okay, so these are the products I spoke about. So the Cori's are really good for your super high gloss polyester finishes, also your satin finishes as well. And um, they do a really good job keeping off fingerprints, dust, uh, and getting off like little bits of gunk that may be on the finish. Uh, but we've been using them for years, highly recommended. Now the old Englishes I recommend for the wood tone finish. You're not gonna wanna use these on a polyester finish at all. Um, so there's a light woods one and a dark woods. Do not interchange these. If you use the dark one, especially on a lighter grain finish, you're just going to majorly point out all the bad spots in the piano because it's going to turn them really dark. Um, again, and also the light woods one just won't really do anything on a, on a darker finish. The Murphy's Oil Soap we've been using for years as well. Uh, we use this primarily in the shop. You have to dilute it. I'd use like maybe a cap full to a bigger spray bottle, but we use this uh, for getting off gunk off of any type of finish. I've never had it uh, damage any finish in any way. 
Uh, we use these especially in restoration jobs when we're cleaning off sound boards. We even use a little with like maybe some four aught steel wool at the same time as well. But again, if there's some really nasty junk on a, on a finish, just dilute it and that should do a really good job of getting it off of there. Okay, so let's go back to the shop and uh, talk about numbers three and four. Okay, so the third area we're going to focus on is going to be regular maintenance of your piano. Now, regular maintenance includes regular tunings, uh, the occasional regulation, and voicing as well. These three components together will make your piano shine. It'll make it play like it was originally intended to. So I recommend having your piano tuned at least once a year. If you're using your piano very regularly, I would go to twice a year, and in some settings, it's even recommended three or four times a year. It just kind of depends on how much use it's getting and also the environment it's in. Now, it's very important to have a technician lay eyes on your piano at least once a year. Uh, technicians are trained to be able to look for problems that may be creeping up on you and stuff that may be a problem later down the line, stuff that you definitely want to avoid as soon as possible. So what happens is that people may say, well, it's been a few years since my piano's been tuned, but it sounds pretty good. But I can assure you, if you were to play that piano along with another song that's in tune, like with maybe something on the radio or something on another recording, that's really where you're gonna notice that your piano's pretty out of tune. So having regular tunings keeps you from having to do too many pitch raises over time, which isn't very healthy for your piano. It puts a lot of extra stress on it. So I highly recommend just have regular tunings. Let a technician lay eyes on your piano on a regular basis and you should be in pretty good shape. Now when it comes to regulation, that's something I recommend maybe every few years. Over time what happens is things get compressed. You have felts, you have leathers, you have all sorts of different components in a piano. They will compress, they will stretch, they will wear out over time. So what happens is your piano may start to get a little more difficult to play over time. So regulation essentially brings the piano back to factory specs, makes the touch as light as possible, or if you prefer a heavier touch, that can be adjusted to that as well. So just have regular uh, regulations uh, to bring the touch back to where it should be, make it more comfortable for you to play. And voicing as well, essentially what happens over time is where the felt hammers strike the strings, they do wear little grooves into them from doing that. Those get real compact and really hard over time, and typically what will happen is that the piano becomes really bright and brittle and gets like a really harsh tone to it. So voicing will reshape the tone. It'll soften it, mellow it, even it out. Also what typically happens is the notes you play the most often will get the brightest because they're being used most of the time. The felt is getting compacted more than the other ones around it, so it's good to have a voicing every few years kind of even out the tone and uh, make it pretty even throughout the whole uh, piano range. So between tuning, regulation, and voicing, these three components together will keep your piano playing as perfectly as possible. And again, I recommend having a technician lay eyes on your piano at least once a year. Let them make the recommendations as to what your piano may need, and your piano will last a very long time and it'll be very happy and uh, pleased that you're keeping up with it. So fourth and last, the big secret is play your piano. I know it may sound silly, but the more you play the piano, the better it's going to be. Pianos aren't designed to sit idly by. There's a lot of components in them that need to move on a regular basis. Besides, they're just designed to be played and designed to be enjoyed. I kind of think of a piano as a living, breathing thing. It does need attention, it needs regular care, it needs regular, I guess you could call feeding. Uh, it just needs regular attention. So the more you play the piano, the better it's going to be and the better it's going to play for you. So to recap, number one, the environment. Number two, the finish care. Number three, regular maintenance. And number four, play the piano. It's the best thing you can do for it. So I hope that answers maybe a few questions you had about caring for your piano. If you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to us. Comments, questions, snide remarks, leave them below. And as always, stay tuned.